Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Dion Under with the top 10 browser FPS games of 2017. Counter Strike Portable is a fan made browser FPS and is described as a web browser based port of Counter Strike. While Portable takes inspiration from the classic 1.6 version, the way the two games play out are almost completely different, the only similarity being that Portable having the classic map Dust 2. The gameplay is absolutely hilarious, weapon recoil is non-existent, while hitboxes are insanely huge, add on top of that the massive ragdoll and the comical amount of wall banging and it's easy to see why CS Portable is just a fun game to have a quick match on. There is multiplayer, but getting online is a little bit troublesome. The best idea is to hop into a 1v8 bot match and just go ham. The weapons you can play with are tied quite closely to what is available in CS, and despite the lack of realism, it's just entertaining to hit a 5k oomp collat with flicks that 100% should not have connected. Dead Trigger 2 is a zombie themed FPS game that can be played through your browser on Facebook, but can also be downloaded to your Android or iOS device. Trigger 2 is a single player only game that allows you to progress for a zombie ridden country, collecting different weapons and completing a variety of missions. Gameplay wise, Dead Trigger 2 can be played two ways. The default way is that you control the character's movement and aiming, but the game automatically shoots for you when you are aiming correctly and in range. Now this is obviously meant for mobile users and it works quite well on that platform. The advanced control system allows the player to fire for themselves, making it perfect to play on the PC. The game allows you to carry two primary weapons, a melee and three consumables. Now different weapons can be created in the hideout and swapped out before missions. Now talking about the missions, there actually is quite a bit of thought put behind them. Now some of them are just along the lines of clear out all the zombies, some involve escorting an engineer or trying to track down an enemy with some vital info. Graphics wise, Dead Trigger 2 isn't that bad, it's running on the Unity engine and the game is made to be played on mobile first but it still looks decent enough on Facebook that it is, you know, a cool game to play once in a while if you have some spare time. The Red Crucible series is extremely famous in the browser first person shooter scene and there is currently two versions that are live. The first version is Red Crucible Reloaded, which is basically an improved version of Red Crucible 2, a game released all the way back in 2010. After the release of Red Crucible Firestorm, the second game, the developers realised that Firestorm wasn't a better game for everybody. And thus Red Crucible Reloaded was born, it's meant to work on slower computers and delivers different gameplay. Reloaded features a ton of different modes including Team Deathmatch, Territories i.e. Domination, Last Man Standing and Free Throw. Now the gameplay it worked, but it had very few elements that really stood out to me. Shooting was fine, movement was fine, the game in general felt fine, however there is two really big problems that hold the game back, the big performance issues and the lack of players. Despite Reloaded being a toned down version of Firestorm, I felt a ton of lag. There is also not too many people playing this game, it seems that most are playing Firestorm instead. If you guys want to hear my opinion about Firestorm, make sure to go and stick around, and also hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying the video. Roblox is known as a bit of a meme in the gaming community. It's a social hub for countless different games, but one of them being Phantom Forces. From first impressions, Phantom Forces looks like a joke, but in all honesty, it actually is quite an enjoyable game. It really takes a lot of inspiration from Battlefield of all games, and in the gameplay department, it retains many of the realistic elements like muzzle velocity and bullet drop, which you really wouldn't expect. Shooting has a hefty amount of recoil behind it and in conjunction with the aforementioned bullet drop makes shooting at long range a really difficult task. Now in terms of movement, it works perfectly for a game like this, hopping over ledges is done with a quick vault and there even is a jump to prone button that can really swing a 1v2 battle in your favour. Phantom Forces has four different classes that you can play with, Assault, Engineer, Support and Recon, and they basically use the go and divvy up the weapons, i.e. the Assault class can only use the Assault Rifles, while the Recon class can only use Sniper Rifles and so on. Talking about the weapons, there is currently 63 in game, which is quite impressive. While the sounds of the weapons may feel a little bit flat, the damage, fire rate and most importantly recoil are quite balanced and overall each weapon has its own place in the game. 
Currently, there are seven playable maps and three game modes, those being Team Deathmatch, King of the Hill, and Domination. The maps range in size and generally fit to the mode quite well. However, some maps you might be trying to look around for an enemy for a little bit too long. The graphics of Phantom Forces definitely has that Minecraft feel, and that would turn away a lot of plays, including me initially. But that is the style of Roblox in general, and it doesn't really take away anything from the rather enjoyable gameplay. Now we have the latest Red Crucible game called Firestorm. Unlike Red Crucible Reloaded, which is basically a bit of an upgrade from Red Crucible 2, this is a completely different game with new gameplay mechanics, new maps, new weapons, and also new items. Now, where the previous games were NATO vs USSR, Red Crucible Firestorm is about a chaotic war with China and the private military companies involved. Firestorm features better graphics, which can be seen in the detail of the maps and also in the design of the weapons. This improves the experience greatly, along with the higher play count servers and the lower ping to the servers as well. Overall, Firestorm is a significant upgrade over Reloaded in my opinion, along with the fact there is also tanks and planes that you can play around with, however some maps just exclude it completely if you're not into that type of stuff. Project War is a Russian browser FPS that can only be played on the Russian social media site VK. Now I'll give you an early warning that everything in the game is in Russian and thus it can be difficult to navigate around the menus, especially buying weapons and the such. However, getting into the game isn't too hard and with all of that said, Project War is a great game to go and check out for a game or two. Now, graphics are on point. Of course, we're not talking COD or Battlefield level, but the levels are atmospheric and destructible to an extent, adding to the immersion. Weapons are varied, the default being the AK-74U, but they look true to the real-life counterparts in the design and animations. When you shoot people in Project War, it feels like it's one of two extremes. It feels like they die really slowly, or it's basically an insta-kill. Body shots do minimal damage, but headshots are one shot one kill if I remember correctly, so aiming high is always the best idea. Despite the game's polish, my connection to the Russian servers was poor to be expected, and attempting to buy weapons didn't really come up with much. This is more of a game that you play once to go and try out, rather than a game that you'd go and sink a ton of time into. Wolf 3D, one of my most beloved games of all time, is now available to play on Bethesda's site for free. If you haven't played this game, you are missing out. It's probably one of the most influential FPS games of all time, a piece of history that paved the way for Doom, Quake, and basically every FPS after it. The game's premise is simple, you're trapped in a Nazi prison, you kill a guard and pick up a single pistol. Your goal, escape the prison and kill Hitler. It's so simple, but it's so satisfying to go through all of these levels and then you get to the very, very, very end and that final boss level is nuts. I'm only showing off the first level two, so I don't go and spoil any gameplay, but damn, that last level is insane. Now, this version allows you to play every level from the get-go, but still at least play the first few levels before skipping to the end. Gameplay is completely different to what we used to right now. You control your character with the arrow keys, but where you face is where your gun points. Press X to fire. It's so simple, but it works so perfectly. Now, there is an option in the settings where you can go and use your mouse. Don't go and cave in into that setting. Play it like everybody played it back in 1992 when this game was first released. If the game is a little bit easy for you, there is four difficulty settings. Each step up adding more enemies with high HP pools that do more damage to you. Now the background music is amazing and the sound effects fit so well. It's legit a non-stop nostalgia trip for me every time I load it up. Of all the games I suggest today, I highly suggest trying out Wolf 3D. While it might not be the best game on this list, it was the king many, many years ago, and trying out the forefather of FPS games should be high on your priority list. Global Strike can be described pretty easily. It's a straight ripoff of Counter-Strike 1.6 that had a baby with Crossfire. Now, despite the lack of any originality, Global Strike is a solid and extremely enjoyable browser FPS. Starting off with the mechanics, it looks like 1.6 through and through. The movement, it feels like 1.6. The shooting mechanics, it feels like 1.6. The only stuff it doesn't take is the round by round weapon and gear purchasing, which is basically the staple of Counter-Strike. And in this game, it just adopts a model that is seen in basically every Chinese free-to-play FPS. 
And with that said, Counter-Strike and Global Strike, these two games play out quite differently. The lobby system is straight from Crossfire, along with the different rarities of weapons that you can go and play with. Now, you have your real life money only weapons, you have your box only weapons that you have to go and open with keys and whatnot, you have your in-game currency weapons, and that would instantly trigger my pay to win alert, but saying that, I'm gonna go and give it a pass simply because you can go and use GP weapons quite easily in this game and dominate the people that have sunk like a thousand dollars into this game for no apparent reason. You you can go and demolish them, you know, with a little bit of skill. Besides from Dust 2, there is a ton of symmetrical maps, and besides from Bomb Diffuse, there is Arms Race, Free For All, and even a zombie mode to go and play. Global Strike fits perfectly into the generic free-to-play FPS cliche, but it's done on a browser and it's done very well. It has next to no lag, tons of servers, and a very active player base. It's extremely easy to load up since no plugins are needed, and overall I found myself playing Global Strike a lot longer than I expected. Is Global Strike an original game? No, but it's still a really fun game nevertheless. Despite it being a ripoff of Crossfire in a browser form, a really fun fact is on Facebook this game is under a different name. It's under Headshot and there is another game on Facebook that is basically a reskin of a reskin of this game and it's called something else. It's really weird how they're publishing this game, but regardless, Go Global Strike is a game that I would really recommend. Coming in at the number two spot, we have Be Gone, one of the first browser FPS games I ever played. I think I made a video on this game back in 2010 or 2012, and this game is still going very strong in 2017, and for good reason, Be Gone is probably the most tactical game on this list. Be Gone hones in on one mode, round based elimination. Each team spawns at the opposite side of the map and the team that dies first loses. There is a few maps to go and play on but the warehouse map is by far the most popular though the other maps get a little bit of playtime as well. There is no pre-match setting up, you just hop into game and you get given the MP5 as a default weapon. Through killing enemies, winning rounds and getting headshots etc, you get money which you can go and use to buy different weapons or customise your existing one. Now, if you buy a weapon or an attachment and you die, you don't lose it so you're able to go and use it in the next round. And that definitely punishes new players less which is really good given that browser games are more casual than their standalone alternatives. Weapons wise you have an automatic shotgun, an M4A4, a sniper rifle, a machine gun and more, but these all start out bare bones. Customization includes different scopes, laser sights, bullet types, magazines and so on, which is especially important on the sniper rifle that doesn't come with a scope when you first buy it. Gameplay is brutal, the time to kill is extremely quick so you have to be on your toes and grenades do a ton of damage. Unlike other games on this list, Be Gone really punishes you if your reactions and aim isn't up to point. There's no pay to win, there's no money shop, you just go into game, everything gets set back to square one, everybody has the MP5 at the first round and then you have to go and work it back again throughout all the rounds of the match. So I think this game is probably the most fair in that aspect. Now while I'm here, I'll mention Be Gone 2, which is basically the futuristic sequel of Be Gone. It looks great, it has a quake-like feel, but it's basically dead. Don't bother trying to go and load it up, which takes forever in comparison to Be Gone, which is really, really quick. Or trying to go and find a game, as nobody plays it. Just a quick heads up to whoever is kind of curious about the sequel. Coming in at the number one spot, we have Contract Wars, the undisputed king of browser-based FPS games. It tops every single list in this genre, and it's very easy to go and see why. Contract Wars is a AAA game packed into your browser. Let's get right into it. The most striking thing about this game is obviously the graphics. Despite being a browser Unity game, Contract War somehow looks better than every other browser FPS, but also a ton of free to play FPS titles that you have to go and download and install. The staggering attention to detail is basically astonishing. The maps have this battle-worn tone, which contrasts perfectly to the bright sunlight, reflecting off certain objects to go and highlight specific areas. Each object, be it a box, a container, or even a truck, has been specifically modelled to fit the tone of the map so nothing seems out of place or odd. 
When you're getting shot, blood spurts into the corners of your screen, and in conjunction with the harsh light, it gives a sense of urgency to each battle. This crescendos when you die, as your character falls onto the ground and you look up at the sky like there is no cut period where you just go back to the fade and whatnot. You literally fall onto the ground and then you respawn. It's pretty cool. The weapon models are quite detailed, along with the animations, especially scoping in. While most games make scoping in have no real consequences, no real negative consequences, in Contract Wars, the scope takes out a small section of your screen, and thus, if you're not scoping in on the right target, it can be very difficult to go and find who you're actually trying to shoot at. One thing I love about this game is the HUD. It's extremely minimalistic. Only an ammo counter in the bottom right hand corner, a small minimap in the top left hand corner, and a small kill feed in the top right hand corner. So the emphasis is on the gameplay. A small notification pops up when you get a kill, but this really helps in times of confusion and in conjunction with a sound cue, it really goes and makes it quite clear if you've killed somebody or if you haven't. Now talking about the gameplay, it's definitely hardcore. High amounts of recoil and fast times to kill is definitely frustrating at times, but it adds to the experience. Mode wise, there is a fair selection. Team Deathmatch, Deathmatch, Search and Destroy and Conquest to name a few. There is also a hardcore mode, which removes most of your HUD and makes it really easy to go and die. Like one to two shots and you're dead. And it really, really goes and punishes if you go and misstep. Contract Wars goes and supplies a great selection of maps as well, ranging from close quarter battles between shipping containers or more drawn out battles around a lake. Now out of game, there is a massive amount of customization. There is a huge set of modern firearms from all over the world which can modify to your heart's content. And on top of that, there is an RPG-like system where you have multiple skill trees that you can go down and that grants you some bonuses and buffs and whatnot and that adds a lot more replayability. Also, there is missions to complete, clans to join, and awards to unlock. All up, Contract Wars feels like a standalone game. So much so, there is a dedicated community that none of the other games on this list really has. It is really, really tight knit. There is YouTubers dedicated to this game, there is montage makers. Overall, Contract Wars has a really big community, and overall, it won't be difficult to go and find a game. Because of how successful Contract Wars was, Absolute Software decided to go and make a sequel. This game is called Hide Ops and is currently in early access on Steam. I personally haven't played it, but given that Contract Wars got the number one spot on this list, I thought I'd go and just mention it because I think some people would be interested. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this top 10 list. A lot of the other lists for top 10 browser FPS games, like half the games on those lists were dead. So I thought, why not make an updated version? All of these games are live right now. You can go and play and they're active enough and that is really, really good. So I thought, why not go and make an updated version for people that are wanting it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to go and chuck a like rating. Go and subscribe. This video took quite a long time to do research on the games, to go and get the gameplay, to writing the script and editing the video and whatnot so hopefully you guys did enjoy it but other than that it's undercover dudes all the way from down under out